All right, I'm going to try to do this again and see if it works. I'm just going to go through these little videos and make it into one big video. Um, this one is the House of Cards. Hey, the House of Lords isn't some giant house party for rich old men. But who are the Lords and why do we have them? The Lords started off as a kind of advisory council to the King, who was much more powerful back then. They met up at Westminster every now and then to discuss matters of state. But in 1215, King John, of Robin Hood fame, was forced to sign the Magna Carta, sharing power with the nobility. Trade became more and more important, leading to the rise of a new merchant class. By the 14th century, Edward III had two groups of advisers divided into chambers. The Lords and the Commons, made up of lesser knights and merchants. This is why we have two houses in Parliament. As time passed, the Commons became increasingly dominant and the King became less powerful. In 1649, King Charles was even executed by the Commons. The balance of power between the houses swung firmly towards the Commons. From that day on, inheriting seats made the people feel like the Lords were only for the privileged. As society moved on and cultures changed, the questions arose. How have these people earned their place? How can they represent the public? In 1958, the Life Peerages Act introduced women into the House and radically changed who's in the Lords. From then on, any man or woman could come into the House based on what they had achieved in their career. The Lords Act of 1999 reduced the number of hereditary peers in the House and stopped Lords passing their seat to their own family. A panel was made to help the Prime Minister decide who is brought into the House, so that now the House is made up of people from all walks of life. Political peers, crossbench peers, as well as hereditary peers and bishops. They all use their experience from inside and outside of Parliament to check and challenge government. So what does the House of Lords do on a daily basis? The House has three main functions. To question... All right, so this is more in the modern time. So I'm going to switch over to um, the House of Commons. Get rid of that. And this also goes to the history of the House of Commons too. Too busy bickering on TV to run the country. There's got to be more to the House of Commons than that, right? Before the House of Commons or the House of Lords, there was just the King and his barons. The King could call on them whenever he wanted, but he didn't count on them becoming powerful. And in 1215, they made King John seal Magna Carta, which forced him to obey the law and set up an advisory council of 25 men. Fifty years later, Simon de Montfort rebelled against Henry III and for the first time invited representatives of the towns together with the Knights of the Shires to his 1265 Parliament. These citizens met separately from the nobility and evolved to form the House of Commons in 1332. So, now there are two houses, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. As the rights of the people increased, the King and nobility became less powerful and the balance of power eventually swung to the Commons. In 1512, a huge fire consumed Westminster Palace. Henry VIII moved out, and once rebuilt, he became Parliament's home. Parliament still works from Westminster today and has three parts, the House of Commons, the House of Lords and the Monarchy. Members of the House of Commons are elected by you and me. Every five years, we elect representatives to run the country on our behalf, which means we run the country. Kinda. It's easy to run as a candidate. You just have to be 18. Not in prison and not a lord. Oh, and also, you can't be the monarch. Ever since Charles I burst in on the chamber uninvited, no king or queen has been allowed in. So, what does the House actually do all day? It debates important issues, makes and reviews our laws, represents the public, and holds the government to account. Inside the House of Commons, there are two sides. On one side, the government who run the country, and on the other side, the opposition, who keep an eye on what the government are doing. The chamber only has 437 seats for over 600 members, so MPs have to pack in for big debates. The common speaker sits at the head of the room to maintain order. The Prime Minister leads the government and appoints ministers to form a cabinet. You'll see them on the front bench. It's the government that introduces most of the ideas for new laws and changes to old ones. The opposition questions and challenges the government. 
All MPs split their time between the House of Commons and their constituency. Often MPs have to figure out what's best for their party or what's best for the local people they represent, even the ones who didn't vote for them. There are lots of ways the government is held to account. Every week, for half an hour, the Prime Minister comes to the House of Commons to answer questions from MPs. It's dramatic, it's heated, and it's this that gets the most viewers tuning in. But it's not just the PM in the hot seat. MPs get to question ministers from all government departments. And then there are select committees where MPs spend a lot of time reviewing the policies and spending of government. This is called scrutiny. They speak to experts and the public to understand how laws affect our everyday lives. This work helps the government shape their policies. Also, whenever the government wants to raise taxes, the House of Commons has to agree. They review any proposed bill before they vote. So it's not just a lot of rowdy bickering. They do more than what's shown on TV. Debating important issues, making laws, holding the government to account, and allowing MPs to represent the public. That's you. So, what do you think of the House of Commons? So, that's the... The basics of the House of Commons. So, um, uh, good. Well, and, and if I go back to this, uh, I'm going to show another thing anyway uh, afterwards, but it shows how the seats are set up. You keep an eye on what the governor are doing. Uh, I just lost it. Yeah, just like it's live. Uh, I'm not... So, the reason why it's set up like that is because if you've ever been in a church in Europe, um, and precisely England, I guess, um, the choir used to sit like that. The choir in the center of the church, these big cathedrals, would sit facing each other like that. And when the nobles first came into the castle, which was Westminster, way back, like over a thousand years ago, um, and when, when they forced, after the Magna Carta in 1215, they forced the king to call the nobles. They met in the choir. That's where they, so it kind of got adapted to, be, that's the style of how, their government sits and they sit opposite each other it's kind of cool it's kind of cool that uh, that and, and 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 it says there that the house of commons got more and more and more powerful the house so the king lost power more and more through history uh and the king and the queen to the point where today they're just a figurehead and um and the house of lords basically turned into if you caught it it went from these you know these intelligent great people that were filters before anything reached the king from the House of Commons, like when William Wilberforce was there, um, the the House of Lords could have stopped the end of the slave trade. So he had to win them over too. Um, today they wouldn't. They wouldn't stop anything. They they all they are is advisors, and they bring in people who are like retired uh, teachers to help um, craft education laws. They bring in like people who are uh, retired policemen to work on like police reform. Um, and, and that's, what they, that's the kind of people that end up in the House of Lords now. It's people that help. They just kind of help out with the, 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 the law stuff. All right. Let me do the virtual tour thing. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work out, but um, one of the uh, great things I was able to do when I went to London a couple of years ago was to tour Parliament. And, uh, yeah, so I just want to kind of show you the building a little bit. Anyway, doesn't, there's not much here. So when you first when you first walk in, you walk into this hall, and this hall is the oldest part of Parliament because it had the fire um, like 800 years ago that burned down the palace and they rebuilt it. Um, this didn't get burned down, and and the, then during World War II, um, uh, Hitler bombed uh, Great Britain. It's called the Battle of Britain, and it went on for years where he was bombing, uh, and he he destroyed a lot of the building that was Parliament. And had to rebuild it, but this room didn't get it. So this room was the is the main hall of the palace, and it is used today for like uh, state events, uh, state funerals. Uh, that's where Winston Churchill's. Uh, there's a marker where Winston Churchill's casket was was open to the you know was there for the public viewing. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is the oldest. This this part of the building is older than than America being discovered, which is kind of wild when you think of it. You can tell that it used to be a palace because uh, it looks more like a palace than it does a government building. So this is the top of the stairs looking around. Right so it's for the tour start, we're going to tour. Then you go into like, this room, and this is where the original um, House of Lords met, the nobles um, after the Magna Carta. 
this was the this was the choir um and you know most of this room survived the bombing and they had to kind of rebuild some of it the floor is original a lot of the paintings even on the walls um yeah oh it jumped why did it jump i don't know why it jumped i don't know what's going on sorry this is what happens and i don't have time to uh kind of there were so many hours and weekends. So again, that's that hall. Go and jump again. And then once you get to that hall, you go into the, to the center hallway. You can really see the palace and some of the great uh, monasteries. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Kind of cool. I remember. Um, you look at the ceiling, and it's a tribute to the War of the Roses and the White Roses and the Red Roses. Which Partisan and Catholic, and uh, it's just incredible. It's it's just being evil. Nothing's going to be easy. It's just the way it is. So this is Parliament. The House of Commons, and again, they sit across from each other like this. Here, there, there's a there's a uh, a mace, which is this like long club, like with a crown on it. Um, and the, the speaker is someone who's appointed by the crown and they are like the referee, uh, when they have meetings and the speaker brings in the mace and, the, and he lays the mace so the crown points towards the majority. Whoever's in the majority in the house of commons, they vote for the prime minister. The prime minister then appoints people to be in his cabinet or her cabinet and they sit on the front bench. Um, and they're actually members of parliament. So you, you could have like your member of parliament, like your member of Congress be the secretary of education, um, or your member of parliament be the prime minister. And that's kind of like their president today. That's their person who runs the, and today it's Boris Johnson. So these boxes here, this built, this room got totally demolished by the bombs and, um, they had to rebuild it after world war two. And, uh, uh, all the commonwealths, all the the, the colonies, uh, the former colonies, uh, chipped in to to help rebuild it. And the boxes, which are very famous, when the speaker, uh, when the prime minister speaks, or the opposition party speaks, they have to have the hand in the box. When I was touring this, it was in the room. One of the guys asked um, a guard if they could touch the box, and they were like, "Yep, yeah, you can touch the box." So I went over and touched the box because. I mean, Winston Churchill touched the box. Margaret Thatcher touched the box. I was like, I'm not washing my hand again. Uh, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll show you a clip on that. They see that. Let's see if this is going to jump again. But it's at 37. I just don't know where I am. Oh, not jump. It's cool. They let you walk all around there. I'm just keep the same sense. Into the middle of the hall, and then you'll go to the house of the Lords. I don't know why I didn't go into the house of the Lords. I didn't go into the house of the Lords. Why is that? It's here, it just skipped over it. Weird. Just really odd. I don't know what else to say. I do. Let me just pause it there. Um, and the, all the sh shields are the old lords. They're their family shields above. And it's set up the same way. And, and again, they're just advisors now. This looks even more like a church. All right, let me switch over to this is um, this is the their their their, U, their YouTube channel, I guess, basically. And um, the big thing is once a week, the prime minister takes questions for a half hour, and it gets heated. And it's fun but during COVID. I mean, it's not as as high energy. But that's Boris Johnson um, because there's hardly anyone in the room. They're all kind of remote and stuff too. They're living the life like us. But before that, it looked like that. Um, 
you know, filled with people. And they, they're not like us. We're kind of like, we have an orderly kind of system. They, they kind of go at each other and yell and scream. I'm going to give you some examples. Let me go on in my slides. Um, so go to this slide and I'll show you this slide more close up when, when it's not a video. Um, an example of, so that's, that's the house of commons, which is like a house of representatives. And if I, if I hit this, this is going to give you an example of how this goes. Shut these, just in case it's freaking it out. Mr. Speaker, the big question this week is, can we believe what the Prime Minister says? So, so let us start with his credibility gulf over the election. The Prime Minister was asked this. Hand on heart, if the polls showed a hundred seat majority, would you still have called off the election? And he said yes. Yeah, they just, they does, he out does he expect anyone this to is believe old, that? Um, and Mr. Speaker, I will take no lectures. Is that me laying turning towards the Prime Minister? Summer, yeah, this is like ten years ago. I will take no lectures from the leader of opposite. But this summer was four grammar schools against them and then for them again. It was for VAT on airfares and then against it. It was for parking charges and then against it. It was for museum charges against it. I will take no lectures from the leader of the opposition. By the He's the first prime minister in history to flunk an election because he thought he was going to win it. So they're much more heated than we are with it. Um, they do have that that referee that I told you um, that's appointed by the Queen. Um, uh, the speaker he just he just retired and there's a new one now but this is kind of a silly video i don't it's gonna this is the checkers game where grandson and granddad will bond and there's no way of me shutting it off all right skip good he says order 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 the government chief whip has absolutely no business whatsoever shouting from a sedentary position. He order the honourable gentleman will remain in the chamber. When sorry, students, just call second, please. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. And since when an amendment has order, since, uh, I know what I'm doing. But when he turns up at our children's school as a parent, he's a very well-behaved fellow. Be a good boy. That it, order, time in order. I apologize for interrupting the Prime Minister. There is simply far too much noise. The public doesn't like it, and neither do I. Prime this government or that Labour Party led by Jeremy Corbyn. We don't name people in the chamber. People must observe the rules. No, no, or, order. Order. Order, I am simply and politely informing the Prime Minister of the very long established procedure with which everybody, including the Prime Minister, must comply. Mr. Lewis, get a grip of yourself, man. So it's pretty silly. I mean, that, that, I didn't just want you to see kind of like a silly thing. So anyway, um, and again, that's very similar to our House of um, Representatives. Um, and again, this one, this is the House of Lords, and I'll be able to show you a little bit better after this video. Um, and this video is kind of it in action. It's kind of cool. It's the Queen coming. She comes once a year and does a parliamentary address, and she can't go into the House of Commons because uh, Charles. So she goes into the House of Lords and the House of Commons comes into the House of Lords. It's kind of like a joint session and the President is the State of the Union. It's very similar. But it's the one thing that the Queen really still does in the government is to give this kind of pet talk. And it's fucking in Paris. This is how they usually arrive at school. You've got to live.
And here she is coming in with Prince Charles, who is uh, her su successor, her son. So she gives an address. Now I'll, I'll leave it there. <laughs> 